Next up on the Cosmic News Network, first contact with Joshua Putt. Good morning, Earthlings. Good. How you doing today? Good. How you doing today? Welcome morning, to First Contact Radio. How you doing today? Welcome to First Contact Radio. To talk about all these things we're talking about is because in life, everything is energy. Every single thing that's out there. Yo, it's First Contact with Joshua Poet. He's the man on the mic, just in case you didn't know it. Covering news from all around the globe. From the weather and space to UFOs. We'll talk politics and make you open your eyes. Conspiracy theories and government lies. We'll dig it all up and try to find the proof. Cause it's time to demand the truth. It's time. First Contact it's time. Radio. We it's have time arrived. to demand the truth. Good morning, Earthlings. How you doing today? Welcome to First Contact Radio. Hope you had a good weekend. Today is the 18th of November. We have a sun sign in Scorpio, water sign. We have a moon sign in Gemini, an air sign. So we're dealing with the elements of air and the elements of water. Water is the conscious mind. We think of water, we think of emotions. So we're dealing with emotions. And when we think of air, we're thinking of the words and the actions we use to communicate. Okay, so underneath, we want to communicate. That's what's going on in the subconscious, this desire to communicate, to express one's words and actions. Today, it is in Gemini. So expressing the words and actions from the Gemini point of view, one of the things that's necessary is our sense of discernment what it is that we are learning, that we are speaking, that we are acting out. And the conscious mind, the emotions, is the emo- are the emotions of the Scorpio emotions, the deep down emotions, things that we don't usually deal with because they're buried down under the surface somewhere. So dealing with these emotions and then the words and actions, we want to make sure that they're in good balance because sometimes... You know what happens when we get all emotional and then we allow our emotions to dictate the words we speak? It doesn't always work out so well. So we want to be able to make sure that our emotions are not pushing any buttons, especially in relation to the words and the actions. All right? So that's what we have today. The moon phase at the moment is 99% of the way full making its way down. We had the full moon yesterday. Now we're going back towards the new moon, so waning is the phase. The Mayan Oracle, we're at a six-tone day. Six tones are the rhythmic tones of equality. Kin for today and the guide for today are the same, which is the storm. The storm gathers energy. So the phrase for today is, I organize in order to catalyze balancing energy. I seal the matrix of self-generation with the rhythmic tone of equality. I'm guided by my own power doubled, so the self-generation comes from the idea of the storm, self-generating energy within that storm. All right, let's move on to space weather. Solar wind currently is at 392 kilometers per second. Planetary K index is quiet at the moment. Our corona hole that was here has moved away. We do still have this giant sunspot that we're aware of and making, hoping that it doesn't shoot anything our direction. And then we've got M-class flare possibility up to 60%. Well, X-class is 15%. And geomagnetic storm activity is relatively, well, starting to pick up in the higher latitudes. We're now up to uh, 20% pretty much across the board some way or shape all right and if we go and look here also comet ice and you'll hear more about comet ice on in this show look how long the tail is now Kyson comet Ison's recent outburst of activity has done more than simply brighten the comet whatever exploded from the comet's core also created a spectacularly long tail more than 16 million kilometers from end to end Scroll down to see the full extent of the comet ice on is photographed by Michael Jaeger of Austria. Okay. That's pretty amazing, huh? That is pretty amazing. 
All right, let's go over to the report today from suspicious observers. See what uh, what is to be learned from this. There we go. Good morning, folks. We're at the homepage of the Weather Channel. As I was in the crosshairs I was watching last night, Dr. Forbes deserves a big up for the manner in which he's now describing these storms knuckling across the states. The damage tolls won't be known for hours, and the number of dead is rising. The giant low-pressure system at the Great Lakes now came tearing across the country with a convergence reinforcing high pressure to the east. They yanked north where they met in the middle. This warmth and moisture was met by frigid air brought around the back side from the north of that same driving low. The tornado sirens began in East Columbus around dinner time, came and went, along with major wind and rain. The lightning wasn't so bad, but as I was outside this morning looking for ice on, the damage was visible around me, evident even in the dark. The RSOE should be adding more extreme weather and tornado icons to the east as the day goes on. Eastern Australia also saw a tornado touchdown. We knew the storms were coming, but they were more severe than expected. Still got that low in southwest Europe, while another line crests the channel now. In the Pacific, we see another cell coming into play on the west coast as we speak. National Hurricane Center also tracking out in the Atlantic, a mid-November what? should develop fully within 48 hours. All links to your local weather can be found below this video in the About tab with the other citations. This is the Tropical Rainfall Measurement Mission. Good article about a volcano expected to erupt under the ice in West Antarctica. Not expected to blast through the ice, but the melt would be major. This takes me right into a point from yesterday's evening news. We took a better look at the Scotia Sea, home of the recent major quakes. One big question is why did yesterday's rumble not cause a tsunami? Well, tsunamis are most often caused by a thrust vertically at a subduction zone, but at a transform fault, oceanic fault, or spreading rifts, movement tends to be lateral, which will not make a big wave. Now, there are no volcanoes on the ridge where that quake hit, but they do indeed pepper the general area. also have an amazing paper on the ice melt, tidal forces, and potential climate influence linked below. Latest on Comet Ison. Brighter and brighter. To review, we do not know if it was a major outgassing or a breakup of the nucleus that caused the brightening. Still too hard to see, but we should learn soon enough. I recommend taking down the links to the observing campaign in Bruce Gary's website. By the way, the sun continues to pop CME after CME at ISON, one every other day or so. They're not major and there's not high flare value associated, but plasma shock after plasma shock has been tagging the comet for about two weeks. Latest endless splash is dead on target. I've linked below the stereo ISON page for about the 20th time since 2012. Our satellites are about to get incredible visibility of this comet here in a few days, and this shows which camera to look at on which day and where the comet will be in the frame. Solar wind speed is falling in constant density, keeping the KP index quiet. There are no high energy protons afoot in the magnetometer and electron flux have regained their nice calm curves. Solar flaring is absolutely dismal once more. And just look at what is happening down south to the sunspots. The decay and morphing is 10 to 100 times the shifting up north. The major group trailing was a Zurich Class F, but now is pitiful looking next to its developed lead. Then, we will again come to the big guy up north. Shots we are getting are unlike anything any of us have ever seen. I've taken the SDO composites, lined them up atop the Doppler gram to show the helicity, the vortex created even well above the penumbral lines of electricity, which also often show the curves. Bit of a disappointment, Lockheed Martin's planned iris looks do not include that big spot, 11899. Hopefully they can catch that spot and teach everyone something soon. Since the big earthquake down south, the coronal and umbral fields snapped closed immediately. Since then, no seven-pointers or six-pointers. In fact, these four pointers near Europe are the more impressive of the day. Quick note, love to get your opinions on these polls. These are for everyone. Also, change the name of the music shop to Get the Music, because now there are two shops. Popular demand force the return of the Observer Shop. Clothes, gear, mugs, happen to be wearing mine right now. Shots of our star to close, eyes open. No fear, it's 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. Alrighty, alrighty. That is what's going on out there weather-wise. So plan accordingly. All right. Yet last week, I introduced to you Trisha McCannon, right? I told you about uh, the book Jesus that she had written. 
and told you that uh, I'd like to get more into discussing who she is and what she's about. She's been on the show a number of times. There's links to the interviews. I'm going to have her on in an upcoming show. But for today, I'm going to go ahead and play this piece. It is available here at YouTube. And this is a piece called Galactic Awakening, UFOs, Indigo, and Star Children. All right, here we go. Enjoy this. Hi, I'm Trisha McCannon, and thanks again for joining us for Galactic Awakening. This is a series of short YouTube videos uh, to give you a little bit of a preview of a much longer, more involved series that I did uh, about the complexity of the global changes that are going on. This is the second one of the short YouTube videos specifically aimed at a conversation about UFOs, star children, and stargates. In our last presentation, we talked about the different kinds of UFOs and the opening and closing of stargates and the in benevolent, largely benevolent intention of many of these extraterrestrial groups. In this particular presentation, I'd like to speak about the indigo children and the crystal children that are being born. Imagine, if you will, that you've come to a place, <clears throat> you, yourself, and humanity where you're visiting other planets and you discover a beautiful little paradise planet that's absolutely great and there are some beings on that planet that have managed to discover something that could actually destroy the entire planet if they're not very careful and you think gosh what can we do to stop them they don't even know we exist so what are the strategies that these UFO brothers and sisters or star brothers and sisters would have. One would be to land in the front of Washington or the um, courthouse steps of the Capitol and say, yo, you don't know that you know we exist, but we exist. There's lots of inhabited planets out there and we want to just tell you not to go down this path. What is the likelihood that our military and our government would actually go along with that? There's a lot of people that are highly invested in making money off of energy systems, whether it's uh, coal or it's oil or it's gas or it's nuclear energy. So a lot of those invested interests would not be particularly interested in listening to anyone. And certainly our military would be frightened enough and protective enough that they might not stop to listen either. And certainly if the powers that be control the media and own the media, they can put out any stories that they want. You know, horrible terrorists arrive in Washington, uh, green-skinned people aim to take over the world. And of course, we've seen this kind of propaganda in all sorts of movies, very successful movies in Hollywood, where the aliens are continually reptiles and they're continually bad and they're always going to destroy us. Um, this is unfortunate because the poor, you know, star beans are getting some really bad press out there. So that's one approach. A second approach would be to say, I think what we'll do is ask for volunteers among the star nations to see if any of us would be brave enough or crazy enough to incarnate down there on Earth and to become an Earth human like you or me and to grow up within their social systems, to discover what might be wrong with the social systems, and to try to work from within, accepting the same limitations that the rest of us human beings have, all the sorrow, all the pain, all the financial challenges, all the social and sexual challenges, all the many things we try to juggle in this world to figure out how to make a career and how to have a fulfilling life. So many very brave souls decided to do this and they did this basically in three major waves. These are called the indigo children. The first wave began to come in before World War II. And <clears throat> some of uh, you that are listening to this, you might have been born in the 1930s. But of course, once World War II started, it was like, holy schmoly, those people are far more primitive than we ever thought. So, uh, you know, they're down there, you know, killing each other and making lampshades out of their skin, which is one of the classic things we hear about that Hitler did in the concentration camps. So they stopped coming in. So as soon as World War II was over, there was a gigantic influx of them that were called baby boomers. They were born in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. And they literally came in in huge waves. In short, these are the people who wound up creating the revolution through music in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. 
the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, you know, Jefferson Airplane, the Grateful Dead. These were the high creative artists that decided through love, joy, <clears throat> music, and creativity, they were going to transform consciousness in the world. And there were actually nine of the star systems within the Galactic Council that volunteered to be a part of this. The Pleiades is definitely one because they have strong connections with us. The Sirius A system that's only like 7.8 light years from Earth, they decided to be one of them. The Sirius B system that have been here during, they were known to the, the Dogon tribe, uh, very aquatic, amphibious uh, beings, very lovely, a vibrational music heart based that tribe came down here. So there were nine different star systems that uh, volunteered their energies. And of course, each one of the people who came down takes the risk in coming down here where your memories partly wiped of forgetting who you are, forgetting your mission. And so we're down here trying to find one another so that we can connect up with one another to be able to begin to work from within the system in awakening human consciousness, getting to healthier energy systems, healthier food, uh, healthier choices for uh, the entire planet. And many of you listening to this video are probably, in fact, those very people. There was a third wave that began to come in in the 1990s, 1990s and onward. And this was an influx of 14 other planets or star systems that sent volunteers down here. Now, where many of us that came in in the first and second wave had had many lifetimes down here. We knew Earth, we'd been to Earth, we love Earth, we've been involved and we have a history on Earth. A lot of the souls that have come in since the 1990s and 2000s, some of them have had little or no history on Earth. Uh, they're what are called the uh, crystal children or the third wave of the indigos. What are the um, signs by which you will know them? Well, they're highly intuitive, they're very sensitive, they're holistic in their thinking, so they're not so linear. Consequently, they haven't done so well in these much more structured linear school systems that we have. A lot of parents not understanding their um, uh, special needs have put them on Ritalin or put them on drugs, which is not a good thing because, of course, that doesn't help the nervous system at all. <clears throat> um, they, uh, a lot of them have strong holistic minds in terms of tech and their ability to work with computers. Many of them are uh, highly intuitive or they're uh, even telepathic. Uh, they are people that are high vibration souls that have come down here into a more primitive, yes, you know, uh, sophisticated, but emotionally primitive unhealed society. So many times once they get down here the job is a lot harder than they thought. So what happens they uh, if they're in a dysfunctional family trained in a dysfunctional way many times they go for drugs and alcohol because it's easier to go for drugs and alcohol and to try to escape than it is to uh, push such a gigantic boulder up the hill. But in truth if you're listening to this video and you're one of those wake up. Remember who you are. You're probably an incredibly high consciousness soul. You've come down here for a very important mission. Let the drugs and the alcohol just kind of fall to the side. Find your soul group and start doing your work because the planet needs you. All of us need you. Um, this is a really important thing for us to remember. We all play a part and those who have come in in these waves of souls, life down here sometimes seems very difficult. It seems confusing because uh, at a gut level or a soul level, I think most of us have an innate sense of beauty, love, truth, and the eternal. And we're down here in a world that teaches, you know, uh, superficial facts, fast fixes, uh, materialism, anger, greed, addiction, and a whole bunch of other things that really pull us off of our real path the path to our happiness, the path to our life's purpose. And unless we're in line with our life's purpose, we're never going to feel uh, happy or satisfied. So uh, I would say to any of you that have those children, support them, love them, nurture them, and learn from them. 
They are actually meant to be our teachers in this whole next generation of awakening consciousness. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope that if you're interested in this, you'll check out our website, trishamccannonspeaks.com, or you can email me at trishamccannonspeaks at yahoo.com and ask me to send you some of the information about the webinars. Thanks so much for joining us, and God bless. All right, there it is. Pretty good, huh? So you've heard Trish before. Go back and listen to some of the interviews. And as I said, I'm going to get her on an upcoming show because she's uh, really good. It's a lot of great information. All right, UFO News is up next. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. much there we go turn the microphone on then you can hear me and you can't hear anything okay moving right along ufo news for today five stories story number one this was from san antonio texas this story made it to the news it was a november 8th sighting all right remember this one here so above san antonio Anyway, there have been two different sightings in two different days this week. It was captured on video by a man shot Sunday night near Castroville Road on the west side. It shows orbs of light hovering in the sky for nearly 30 minutes. A day later, another woman spotted colorful lights over the Leon Valley area. Both believe they witnessed UFOs. It was scary, said Irene Trujillo, Tru Trujillo, but it was awesome, too, at the same time, because you're seeing something not knowing if you're going to get zapped a representative for joint base san antonio says it wasn't any of their aircraft many people jump to false conclusion that these red orbs are chinese lanterns i live in taiwan and i see them a lot lanterns only burn for two to three minutes a very short time here in taiwan we have a lantern festival and i have them and let them fly off no lantern could be longer than three to five minutes all right, and here's the UFO news report that was there, and you can see the sightings there in the background. Well, oh, you know what? Yeah, you should. There you go. Now you're able to see it. That helps a lot. <laughs> All right, here's the report. And here they are talking about the very actual thing. There we go. And let's get over to these images. There we go. These are the objects right there in question. All right. So there you go. That's in San Antonio. Now we're going to go over to Adelaide, Australia. This was taken with an iPhone 5. Once again, I was standing in the front filming what I thought to be Comet Isa, and then two strange lights appeared. It's a short video, but undeniably weird. From Adelaide, Australia, Comet Isa is supposed to be visible in the Leon sector. However, these unusual lights are in the Sagittarius sector. All right, there we go. Strange lights just right there. What are they? I don't know. But the links will be available so you can check them out and maybe you might know. All right, next we have a massive UFO shoots near Earth's sun in NASA Soho photos. And that object right there. Pretty good size, huh? There is always, if there is one thing UFO researchers can agree on, is that NASA has always been trying to cover up evidence of alien life outside of this planet. This massive UFO in the shape of three-pointed starfish with a long jet stream coming out from behind it is clearly not a comet. You see, a comets are usually round and oblong. This is a massive UFO shooting near the sun, and NASA has not said a single word about it to the public. They refuse to talk about it because they know that to discuss it will bring the attention of the press and then the world. If they ignore it, then a few sites like UFOs Daily and others may catch it, but people often doubt their own eyes. And that's sad that we live in a world where people doubt their own eyes. What a world we have become. We deceive ourselves <laughs> by telling ourselves what we see is not really what we see. 
All right, there's objects in question. You can go through and see. All right, moving on. Here we're going to go to uh, over Leon, Mexico. It's amazing footage of a triangular formation flying across the sky above Leon. There's the object right there. This was from Thursday the 14th. Filmed with night vision. Okay, so that's a good shot. And let's go one more. This one is a glowing orb caught descending to the ground over Sacramento. Glowing orb was seen over Palm Avenue, Foothill a few days ago. Could possibly be a living entity that has reached the top of evolutionary scale, so to speak. It looks very similar in appearance to the UFO seen over Iceland in the cam two weeks ago. Person who uploaded the video has passions for biking and the game Minecraft, but only a single upload YouTube, which tells him his interest lay in other areas. But no deception or intent to deceive is noticed by me. And I have a master's degree in counseling and trained in such things. Okay, so let's go back and look one more time here. Okay, there's the object out here. All right, very bizarre, but the link's available so you can check it out, see what you think. That is our UFO news report for today. Stay tuned. I'll be back with more information. What if our government was responsible for some of the greatest crimes against this nation? Would you really want to know? These are big questions, but these questions deserve answers. It's time to demand the truth. So you see that uh, some of the reports that they're running now, the media is running reports and stories about different ways in which Kennedy might have been killed and CIA is on their list. Dun, dun, dun. They're kind of catching up. Or are they catching up? That's the question. You think the mainstream media is going to catch up with conspiracy theorists? I don't know. So a lot of times we talk about conspiracy theories and the fact that uh, people people that are studying them, those who are studying them, they, uh, they put this information out and then they're told by others how they're wrong and, and all the ways in which we know and they're made to look like they're crazy or bad guys or so on and so forth. And then ultimately, the strange thing, I know that I've experienced it and I'm pretty certain you probably have too, when those who were denying the events actually happened when the truth becomes so overwhelming that they actually find out the truth what do they usually say oh yeah we knew that all the time right so with all of these events that are going on we know it's eventually going to get to that point it's just crazy human psychology well here is something that fits in line with this story dem senator democratic senator we all knew obama was lying really see what this says. On Sunday, appearing on ABC's This Week with fill-in host Martha Raddatz, Senator Kirsten Gilbrand, Democrat from New York, admitted that Democrats knew full well that Ob Americans would be booted from their health insurance plans in an effect of Obamacare implementation. When asked whether Democrats were m misled by President Obama on whether Americans would be able to keep their plans on the individual insurance market, Gilbrand answered, you should have just been specific. No, we all knew. She added that the whole point of Obamacare was covering things people need like preventative care, birth control, pregnancy. The redistributive nature of Obamacare, Gilbrand stated, was the point of the program. Anyone claiming ignorance, therefore, is not telling the truth. Well, here it is. Admittance. So, what is the public going to do? The Democrats didn't tell you this before. 
when Obama was going around saying all of these things, how many Democrats do you remember? How many congresspersons do you remember standing up and say, wait a minute, Americans, we already knew this. How many? So after the fact, it's easy for them to come out and say they knew. Is it to make them look like good guys? But we knew. No. If you knew, you decided not to tell the people when the president was misleading the people. So therefore you are complicit in the activities. Democrats, if you are being if you are supporting the Democratic Party, your party is lying to you. The Republicans are also lying, but at this point in time, you know, we have to look at the situation in hand and we have to understand who's in office right now. Yes, both parties lie. Both parties are lying, but there's a lot of damage being done by the man in power and the party who's believing what he is saying, which are lies, and then they come out and say that they knew he was lying. There shouldn't be anybody that should be out there representing anybody that is in office that knows somebody is lying and then doesn't say anything about it till after the fact. That's what's wrong with this country. So, I don't understand why. So now, Pelosi was confronted on her comment. Confronted by Meet the Press host David Gregory on Sunday about her f famous Obamacare statement in 2010, we have to pass the bill to find out what's in it. The San Francisco congresswoman didn't give an inch. Well, I stand by what I said there. When the people see what's in the bill, they will like it, and they will. Pelosi said in utter defiance of reality. It took a great deal for us to pass the bill, I said. If we go up to the gate and the gate is locked, we'll unlock the gate. Uh, if we can't do that, excuse me, if we can't do that, we'll climb the fence. If the fence is too high, we'll pole vault in. Set aside for a second the fact that Pelosi might have thought she was talking about the Democratic approach to immigration. The former House Speaker had no visible qualms about defending the handiwork she and Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid produced during the disastrous years from 2008 to 2010 that Democrats held both houses of Congress. It doesn't matter what they're saying here, Pelosi nattered. What matters is what happens in the kitchen table of the American people. Actually, what matters is what's been happening with Congress, congressional Democrats who aren't lucky enough to be from San Francisco and who abandoned Obama Friday by voting for the Keep Your Health Plan Act, sponsored by Fred Upton, representative from Illinois. What matters is what's going to happen to Democrats who don't start listening to their constituents when election time rolls around in November. What happens is that American people are seeing what's in the bill. It's what the conservatives have been saying was in the bill for three years now. They're seeing it no matter what Nancy Pelosi says. They don't like it. So, they're lying to you, and then they're standing by their lies and their cover-ups. These are not good people. Okay? Remember, go back and look at the history of the Democratic Party. They are the party of slavery. So if they are, have been in the past, what's not to say that that mentality is not there? Except this time it might not be to enslave a particular race of individuals, but to enslave everybody, all Americans. Okay? That's not a good thing. We see what's going on. They're trying to enslave all Americans. Now, we need to uh, step up to these problems, and the only way to step on up to them is be aware that they're going on. I know, you know, but we have so many friends and and acquaintances and, and people in everyday life that just in such denial about this, it gets a bit daunting, doesn't it? But we shall continue on because sooner or later they'll know the truth. And I believe that if we keep sharing what we know, maybe those that are listening, maybe they're not completely believing it, or maybe they're still in denial, but eventually these things are going to come to pass, the events that we know were this leading, and if in some way at that moment in time, you know, people that we've told stuff to remember what we've said, it might lessen the blow a little bit and help them to get over their deer in the headlights so they can then kind of get on track with what they need to do, because there's some really crappy things going on, and all it takes is the ability to put the pieces together. It's not brain surgery by any means. 
right here we have a volcano that erupted Indonesia volcanoes Sinabung and Maripi erupt two volcanoes erupted Monday in Indonesia prompting warnings for fights flights and evacuation preparations Mount Sinaburg in North Sumatra provide province unleashed volcanic ash as high as 8,000 meters the highest of its eruptions in recent days said government volcano expert Serrano the 2600 meter high mountain has sporadically erupted since September after being dormant for three years officials raised the alert status of Sinaburg to the second highest level after eruption earlier this month prompting evacuations of more than 6,000 villagers living near its slopes its activities have continued since then sometimes unleashing lava down the slopes it was the strongest eruption in the recent days Serrano who like many Indonesians uses a single name transportation ministry spokesman Bamberg Irvin said his office has issued a notice Monday for all airlines to avoid routines near the mountain residents of Medan the province capital about 50 kilometers eastward could see black smoke billowing from Sinemberg hours earlier Mount Merapi Indonesian most volatile volcano in central Java spewed volcano ash about 2,000 meters into the sky causing ash to fall into several towns natural natural disaster management spokesman Sutupo Puro Nugro said 6,000 families have gathered for a possible evacuation Merapi which is in Yogo Yogyakarta province killed more than 300 people and caused the evacuation of 20,000 back in 2010 all right so that's what's going on with some of those volcanoes hopefully the people will get out in time and everyone will be safe and sound all right all right Thor news I'm going to play a clip here because he has a new piece on what's going on with Comet Ison something he announced as important breaking information so let's check this out see what this is all about here we go the Thor news presentation Thor news present this is unprecedented never happened before Comet Ison and the full horsemen C2012 X1 linear C2013 R1 Lovejoy and 2P Enki bring with them an invasion of comets from other solar systems extra solar systems outside of our solar system but this is very strange ladies and gentlemen in a time where our government for whatever reason has sequestered shut down dismantled neutered and muzzled NASA America's crowning jewel space program which has not been the same since JFK it is up to us to figure out what's going on and all I'm telling you is that things are changing I'm not saying this is doom definitely not panic sex do maybe panic cuddling doom for sure but this is very strange feel free to try and debunk me but I don't think you can do it I'm sure though that some people will come up with some clever scientific answers but I got a feeling it just ain't gonna cut the mustard by now everybody and their dog knows about Comet C2012-S1 Ison. NASA says it has a 10,000 year orbit. The JPL still has it listed as not available. And then we've heard about Comet R1 Lovejoy. We know about 2P Enki with its 3.3 periodic orbit. Then there's C2012-X1 Linear with its 1,883 year orbit. And then C2013-R1 Lovejoy with its 10,715 year orbit. Well, did you know there was a comet called C-2013 V3 Nevsky? Its orbit is so big it has not been determined. Did you know about C-2012 Y1 Linear? It has a 233-year orbit. Did you hear about L3 Linear? It has a 6,016-year orbit. Did you know about C-2012 L2 Linear? It has a 13,411-year orbit. Did you know about C-2012 V2 Linear. It has a 14,595 year orbit. Did you know about C2012 L1 linear? It has a 21,000 year orbit. Did you know about C2012 K5? It has a 21,541 year orbit. I shall go ahead and guess that you have not heard of C2012 A2 linear and it's 30,000 
in 97 year orbit. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you an invasion of comets and we have no idea where they came from. You may shrug it off and say it's nothing, but I can guarantee you we have a shit ton of comets coming from all over the galaxy to our sun. Why is that? We, the people, have to figure it out. I can't spell it out for you any clearer. This is major. Maybe we won't understand in 2013. Maybe we won't understand in 2014. But I can guarantee you, soon you'll understand what I'm talking about. Our solar system is about to become Comet City. Ladies and gentlemen, it appears we have a large bevy and cornucopia of comets that have come to us from an extrasolar system. I know science likes to push the OART cloud theory and that technically, no matter what a comet comes from, it just comes from the OART cloud. But the very first comet I'd ever heard of that its orbit had not been determined was Elenin. That's kind of what got me into this whole comet thing was Elenin. Then we got Ison. And now all of a sudden, we have tons of comets that are showing up with orbits from outside of our solar system. 60,000 years not determined? I mean, where are all these coming from? Why are they all coming to the sun now? WTF is going on. We're gonna have to figure this out. I mean, have you noticed NASA's, and they're almost even acting like comma Ison doesn't exist. As I've said, I don't think it's NASA's fault. I think our government has basically shut them down and are taking our taxpayer dollars to prepare themselves to be safe for whatever might be happening. We have a large uptick in extra solar system comets coming from where, coming from why, I don't know. This is pretty crazy. So these next few months are going to be interesting. I have a feeling this activity is going to continually increase. I mean, all you math junkies, grab a calculator. What are the odds that comets with 200 year, 30,000 year, 21,000 year, 13,000 year, 14,000 year, 6,000 year, 21,000 year, all of these are showing up at the same time. This is unprecedented, never happened before. I can't even remember hearing about a comet that they couldn't figure out where it came from. Now we've got over 10, within basically a year from the time Elenin was announced. This is crazy. And don't tell me they didn't come from another solar system if you can't tell me where it came from. Show me on a map. Show me what kick-started it. Show me what kick-started it towards the sun. If it's a dirty snowball, why did all these giants from all these other different solar systems Throw dirty snowballs at our sun. Why? Why? Spell it out for you any clearer. Our solar system is about to become Comet City. All right. Very interesting. That was a very interesting report. We shall see what happens, but living in interesting times, are we not? Okay. Here's an article. Science says there is life after death, and quantum physics proves it. There's something we've always been waiting for, that science admits that there is life after death, or there's no death or life at all. It's consciousness in different stages, and consciousness builds everything we see around us. I'm trying to comprehend this, but we've always felt in some way it's true. It's almost impossible. Well, most scientists would probably say that the concept of afterlife is either nonsense, or at the very least it cannot be scientifically proven. Yet one expert claims that evidence to confirm an existence beyond the grave, and it lies in quantum physics. Every now and then, a simple yet rational, radical idea shakes the very foundations of knowledge, but can also isolate consciousness to every individual in this world. And and uh, anyway, let me play this video for you so you can check it out and see what's going on here with this. I'm gonna play just a portion of it, not the whole thing. So Stuart, you are on the cutting edge of uh, quantum physics and consciousness and the intersection of those two. Yes, Greg, I think uh, quantum physics is the key to consciousness. You know, going back to the Greeks, there's been this controversy between whether the brain produces consciousness or some part of consciousness is out in the universe that we access. And quantum physics allows us to sort of bridge that gap and actually favors uh, being able to access parts of consciousness are the essential features of consciousness which are present in the universe by working through the brain. Are you saying that um, we are accessing something that, that pre-exists and we're basically just a conduit for it then or do we have a say? 
Well, it's not quite that simple. Um, there are basically two approaches to the so-called hard problem of consciousness, namely uh, the hard problem being why we have experience, why we have flavors, tastes, emotions, feelings, how we're different from robots or zombies, uh, why we have an inner life. And the two approaches are basically emergence and some kind of fundamental approach. Emergence is the idea that conscious experience emerges at sort of a high level of complexity. The brain, like many other systems, being sort of a hierarchy, and if you get complex enough up that hierarchy, voila, some new property emerges, like, uh, like a, a, a storm, for example, a hurricane or a tornado is a pattern that emerges from simple elements, gas molecules, air molecules, uh, working together to, to make a funnel cloud, for example, or the great red spot of Jupiter, or a candle flame is an emergent property, or the property of wetness from water is an emergent property. So many people think that consciousness emerges as a new novel property at a high level of complexity in this hierarchical system that we call the brain. The problem with that, I think, is that none of these other emergent phenomena are conscious. They don't have conscious experience. Moreover, there's no real prediction at what level of complexity consciousness might occur in the brain. And if that were the case, computers should be conscious already or should soon be. So for that reason, plus the fact that that would uh, take away any possibility of free will, it also wouldn't give us this property of binding, how we bind everything together into one sense of self or unity of consciousness and how we transition from the pre-conscious or subconscious to consciousness itself. These problems, I think, suggest that there's something more to consciousness than being an emergent property of computation. The brain is more than a simple classical computer. When you say that, that computers would be conscious by now or soon, does that mean that they're doing as many computations as our brain is doing right now? Well, or, or will be soon? Well, they will be within the next 20 years or so. And people make these predictions that when the brain reaches a certain level of computations equivalent to the brain, it should be conscious. But of course, then they'll hedge and say, well, no, it's not organized the same. And they'll keep pushing the boundary back. But the first problem with that is that, that uh, AI people, artificial intelligence people who make these predictions, assume that the brain works uh, along the lines of a computer in that the neurons of the brain and their connections, the synapses, are the fundamental units. So, for example, we have roughly uh, 10 billion neurons, with the th which with 1,000 connections each or 10,000 switches to other neurons, which gives us about 10 to the 15th operations per second, uh, with each neuron operating as a fundamental unit. The problem with that is that each neuron is much, much more complex than a simple switch. For example, consider a simple, a single cell like a, a paramecium, a single cell organism. It swims around, it finds food, it learns. If you suck it into a capillary tube, it escapes. And if you do it again, it gets out quicker and quicker each time so it can learn. It can find mates. It has a sex life. It does all kinds of things. It doesn't have any synapses whatsoever. It's just one cell. And yet it's conscious. I'm not sure it's conscious or not. That's a little bit. But it's certainly intelligent, and it does complex things without any synapses. So if a paramecium, one cell, can do all those things, why should we think that a neuron is just a simple on-off switch or that a synapse is just a simple right. on-off so, switch? That's the capacity... There's a lot more to it. Pretty good, right? So the whole thing's there. It's 10 minutes in length. Let's move on to our message for today. This is Hilarion. Hilarion's Weekly Message 2013. November 17th to 24th, 2013. Hilarion. Beloved ones, as the weeks progress into the winter solstice in the northern hemisphere and the summer solstice in the southern hemisphere, there will be much movement within the hearts of humanity as they absorb the powerful rays of light from the cosmos and many hearts will be transformed by the vibrations and emanations of love within this multifaceted white and other colored light. Through the weeks leading up to the solstice, it is important to hold steady the light within you and maintain balance and focus. You do this automatically as your multidimensional aspects lead you forward on your spiritual journey into ascension and your individual efforts help to create this opportunity to all of humanity. As you walk your daily path, be mindful of the thoughts and feelings streaming into your consciousness as some of these may not be from your own life stream but rather from those around you. It is important that you start each day by clearing your own energy field so that when you venture out into the activities of life upon your world you will know when strange thoughts and feelings enter your field and you can discern that it comes from others. At those moments, 
visualize the violet flame burning and purifying these thoughts and feelings and send them into the great central sun for transmutation and recycling back into light. Many of you are much too sensitive to the energies of others and also the earth's energies and need to practice self-protection and clearing on a consistent and persistent level. The higher energies are claiming many of you to long periods of rest and sleep and we want you to realize that there is more going on at other levels of your being and that there is nothing wrong with you. Just allow yourselves these periods of rest when they occur. Those of you who regularly come to this website are those light bearers who are very active in the ascension process on this planet and are involved in many tasks that require participation at other levels of your being and your loving diligence to these activities are very much appreciated and most needed during these times. You are ones who desire to be of true service to this planet and all life forms upon her and within her. You are participating in your galactic initiations as you give service in this way. Take the time to express gratitude to your galactic brothers and sisters for their support, upliftment, and goodwill which they give selflessly and joyously. Try to connect to their energies and you will feel the joy and laughter that is in their energetic emanations when they are near to you. This is the state of being that you are all moving into as you traverse the corridors of consciousness into a higher way of being and expression. Feel the weight of millennia of the polarity experience lift from your worthy shoulders and surrender to the vibration of love that comes from Divine Mother in ever more powerful streams, until only light remains within you. You have all signed up for this before ever you set foot upon this planet and all your experiences in each polarity have brought you to this pivotal point of transformation and your journey back to source from whence you came many eons ago. It is in truth, a joyous time and a coming of age for the earth and humanity. All that is required now is to continue to hold steady in your intention to see this mission to completion. You have blazed the path so that others may travel it in greater ease and safety, in greater numbers than ever imagined. Until next week. I am High Larian. All right, very good message. I'm High Larian. And let's go and look at what our angel message for today is. Get back your sense of perspective by communing with nature. Meditate, walk, do yoga, or just sit in the garden without noise or chatter. It's always a good thing. You know, we have so much noise and chatter around us all the time. It's good to shut things off just to get away from all of that. It's good for the mind, good for the soul. All right, let's go to our meditation for today. Close your eyes. And exhale. Take a deep breath. And exhale. And another deep breath. And exhale again. Alright, let's just imagine we're walking along the path of life. Just walking along, seeing others walking along about their own business. As you walk through, you make sure that all of your chakras are activated. Starting with the bottom of the spine, the red color chakra. Imagine the energy being drawn into it from the earth. It grounds us to the earth. And from there, let the energy raise up higher to the chakra above it. Yellow, I mean orange at the belly button. And from there, the energy raises up higher to the chakra above it, just below the rib cage, yellow. From the yellow chakra, it moves up to the next chakra above it at the heart space, green. From the green heart chakra, it moves up to the throat, and you see the color blue. From the blue throat chakra, it moves on up further to between the two eyes to the third eye. There you see the color indigo, and finally to the crown chakra. Where you see the color of violet. And then the light continues on into the cosmos. And there you are, walking along the path of life, fully connected. To all of the energy of life that flows through you. Imagine this energy as it feels your body. Imagine how it feels. Imagine the colors. 
the temperature and then just let this energy overflow your body spill out all around you as protective energy and just imagine it expanding outward along the path that you're walking on and as it does imagine this energy just filled with love and just allow it to spill out and imagine how others feel as they're affected by this energy that comes off of you and just see the positive response people have Notice how the love vibration changes the way in which people behave, think, act. Let's imagine now what it is we'd like to accomplish over the course of this week. Let's think about what it is we need to do. And let's imagine ourselves having accomplished that by the week's end. And from that point of accomplishment, let us see backwards all the steps that it took to get to there until we move backwards in time from that moment to where we are now. And all that's left is to remember what we did to get there by thinking backwards of what we did when we arrived to arrive. So let the subconscious mind go on the journey sending love and light out into the world and continuing to move forward along that path of creating what it is we wish to create. Let's take another deep breath. And we'll bring our conscious mind back to the present moment on the count of three. Three, coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two, coming back to the present moment filled with faith. And one, coming back to the present moment happy, healthy, and whole. Happy, healthy, and whole. Go ahead and take another deep breath. Exhale. And open your eyes. There you have it, my friends. That's the show for today. Thank you very much for being here. Start off the first day of the week. I'll be back here all week. Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for sharing the show. Thanks for the comments and the emails and all that. I really appreciate that. We're all in this together, so I appreciate uh, appreciate you sharing the info and subscribing and all the other stuff. Thank you. I'll be back tomorrow. Have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace. I'm out of here.